G'day guys, welcome back to the Devon Too Good Investing channel. Today in this video, we're going to be talking about why Chinese stocks and in particular Alibaba have fallen so hard over the last few days. So guys, before we get into it, like this video and subscribe to my channel. Now, there are many things that investors are extremely fearful about when it comes to Chinese stocks. And recently, the thing that they've been most scared of is this holding foreign companies accountable act so this got finalized late in 2021 so now this act is coming into effect for the 2021 annual reports released by foreign companies such as chinese companies so if we read this first paragraph here as required by the holding foreign companies accountable act the u.s securities and exchange commission has adopted a final rule that will soon require sec registrants, mainly those based in China, to submit documentation and make disclosures relating to Chinese government control and influence over these companies. The rule also establishes the process by which the SEC may impose trading prohibitions on the securities of these companies. So pretty much, there's three things that the SEC wants out of this act. So the first being that Commission identified issuers must submit documentation to the SEC that establishes that they are not owned or controlled by a governmental entity and that foreign in, in that foreign jurisdiction. And the second one is that if a company is determined to be a commission identified issuer for three consecutive years, the SEC is directed to prohibit trading of the registrant's securities. And the third one is Commission identified users that are also foreign issuers are subject to additional specified disclosure requirements including ownership and control by non-US governmental entities and the identification of Chinese Communist Party officials on their board of directors. So what this means for Chinese stocks such as Alibaba, JD.com, Pinduoduo, uh, whatever else is... Um, listed on US exchanges. This means that the company must submit documentation to the SEC that establishes they are not owned by the Chinese Communist Party, essentially. And if they do not uh, comply for three years in a row, they will get delisted. It's as simple as that. Uh, I mean, whether the US actually follows through with this, that's another story. Uh, Honestly, I have no idea if they will, but that's just what the act states. So, this is law right now. This is law. So, if we think about it, the earliest that any Chinese company can get delisted is early 2024, unless, you know, things change. So that that gives you know these Chinese companies a few years to sort this uh, you know sort this issue out. Uh, you know there is a chance that this issue won't be able to get sorted out just because it takes cooperation from the Chinese party in order to release this information. I'm sure a lot of the Chinese companies would love to release this information, but they simply can't because of the jurisdiction that they're in. Uh, in terms of me thinking about risk, look, I I own Alibaba, I own it, I own Barber shares, I also own the 9988 shares on the Hong Kong exchange, and when I think about it, this sort of stuff doesn't change the fundamentals of the business. It's not going to affect how fast it grows, it's not going to affect cash flows, it's not going to affect its balance sheet, it's not going to affect the customers that use Alibaba and the moat they have, it's not going to change their management team. Um, so the way I see it is, look, it, just own, you could just own Hong Kong shares. Like, yeah, the, the, the share price is going to get beaten down. Like, of course it's going to get beaten down. Heaps of people are going to sell it. But I invest in businesses. Does this affect the business? No. Does this affect the stock price? Hell yeah, it's going to affect the stock price. But 
if you're comfortable with the risks, because this is only one of the risks. Like this delisting thing is only just one of the risks of investing in China. You got to deal with the VIE structure. You got to deal with potential accounting fraud. Um, personally, I think accounting fraud is very unlikely for Alibaba. I mean, they are audited by one of the big four accounting firms. I believe it's PwC, albeit it is their Hong Kong office, but Look, I think that's a very low risk. I think VIE structure is a risk. It's definitely real. And if it eventuates, I will lose my entire position. However, it is in none of the countries. It's, it's not in the US's best interest. And it's certainly not in the Chinese best interest to invalidate the VIE structure. Obviously, there's strong competition in China with Alibaba. That's also another risk you have to consider. We can see that their margins have been decreasing over time, particularly their gross margin, and that is usually a sign of you know, strong competition in that industry. And we're seeing that from JD.com. We're seeing that from Pinduoduo. Uh, you know, the cloud business is going to face competition from Tencent Cloud. Uh, but guys... I think I've covered this fairly well, so make sure you like this video, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.